Hi, welcome to my build of King Combat, a 40 inch flying wing. Today is really exciting. We're going to start covering it and the end is in sight. So, what are we going to cover it with? Well, I'm using bits of stuff, offcuts I've got from other builds, because I might as well use them up and I can make up a scheme with those. Uh, there are two, two different types of material. The yellow is uh, Litex, which is from World Models, and the blue and the white is Tuflon, which again is from World Models. If you look in the description below, I'll provide a link to, to both of those materials. The blue Tuflon, of which I've got the most, I'm going to do on the underside, just to try and make that more robust. And, uh, and stand up to those landings a little bit better. On the top, I'm going to be putting the yellow Litex on the wingtips, and I'm going to be putting the white Tuflon in the centre. And I'm going to be putting them on in that order because the Litex is quite thin. It's not transparent, but you can see through it, you can see the ribs there. And if I put the white down first and then the yellow on top, you will see the white through it. So I'm going to put the white on top to uh, just make that look a little, bit, a little bit neater. Now as far as doing the top or bottom first, there's, there's benefits of both really. But I, what I want to try and do is keep the, the seams so they're downwind, if you like, of the airflow as it's travelling. So I don't want seams where the airflow is going to be pushing against that seam because if it comes loose it will just work it off. And also fuel dirt will ingress that and you'll have problems getting it stuck back down if it lifts up. So I'm going to be putting the blue on the underside first and just lapping that up a little bit around the front and on the back edge here and then I'll be putting the material on the top and again another lap. To, uh, to seal it and to make the final seam pointing that way downwind. That's the idea, that's, that's kind of how I'm thinking at the moment. And the, the tools I've got at my disposal today, I've got my Prolux digital heating iron which I've used extensively and find is, is really good, really sensitive to the controls. I've done a, a review of that, if you're interested have a look in the description below and there'll be a link to that. I've got spare socks because sometimes you pick up just a, a little bit of glue on the iron and as you're just starting to heat it and, and, and move it around you spread the glue a little bit. So I've got a clean sock, I've got my invaluable scalpels, these are Swan Morton scalpels, there's two handles, a number four handle and a number three handle and the two blades that I primarily use for, for covering is the 11 the, sorry the 11 blade which is kind of long and thin and pointed and the the number 26 blade which is longer and just allows you to to get a greater distance and perhaps a, a little bit bit more control but I, I, I find these Swan Morton scalpels and, and blades fantastic. I'm, I've never I've used different blades on these and I've never found anything as good as the original Swan Morton, Swan Morton blades. I've also got my heat gun on the floor which I'll perhaps use for some of these compartments just to, to shrink that a little bit better and on the wing tips. So we'll start to get on now and we'll see how it takes shape.
think the um, having two different types of material, the thicker stuff and the thinner stuff, was a mistake because the they they when you're doing a join like this, they shrink at different rates. This the thinner stuff, the the Litex shrinks lovely and it stretches lovely. This is really thick and really tough, and they're just putting them together just just didn't work. So I've got creases all over the place. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's a flying wing, it'll probably get fairly <laughs> bashed up fairly quickly, so, but I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with that, but, you know, I'm self-taught, I've never been taught to do this. If you get anything from it, great, whether that's what not to do, uh, you know, that's, that, that, that's good, or, or, or maybe you'll pick something up, but, yeah, I, I'm not particularly pleased with this. But, you know, that's the way it is. I've learned from it. Uh, I've learned quite a few things today, like don't use two different materials. One thing to remember to do before we start covering the ailerons, elevator, clapperons, is to make sure we know where the hinge slots are in the wing itself. So, we put in the, uh, the, the mylar hinges into the, the aileron, clapperon, and then we just line this up and locate the hinges. Yeah, there we go. So if we don't do this, we'll get a point where we've got the flapperons covered and we've got the, the wing covered and we have no idea where our hinges are. So it's best to do it at this kind of halfway stage, if you like. So I'll get on and I'll do all of these and then I'm going to get these covered. Well, I've now got the fins, the, the flapperons covered and the hatch. So this is finished now. As I said, not overly impressed with, with my, <laughs> my covering today. And I think the big, the real big issue, and it's, it's definitely my mistake, um, is trying to use two different types of material, a thick stuff and, and something thinner. I should have thought really, <laughs> just serves me right for being a cheapskate. But anyway, it'll fly, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yes, that's a good lesson learned there and if, if people learn something from that, great, I hope they do. So, underside, and the top side. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting this fitted out now and getting all the all the bits in it and getting it ready for a for a flight.